Hey everyone, this is uh, Leo again here doing something a little bit special this time. Um, I decided I wanted to do a Dead Space 3 review and I'm doing it in conjunction with Nocturnal Mantis, Philip John Martinez, a good friend of mine and fellow clan member. Credit goes to him for his use of the PVR machine to record this game footage and compiling the, the, uh, the video footage into what you're watching right now. So, we're back today, as I mentioned, with Dead Space 3, the newest installment in the Dead Space series. This newest one sees the return of Isaac Clarke, with a few familiar faces. Uh, I'm going to try and kind of break down some of the key components of the game, go over the pros and the cons in as unbiased of a way as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, just give you some personal feedback from the experience here. Now, we're going to start off, if you're like me, you play most games, including Dead Space, for the storyline. You know, in the first game, we had the haunting halls of the Ishimura and the initial Necromorph outbreak. In the second game, we have, you know, Isaac is fleshed out more as a character. He, you know, starts having spoken dialogue. We get to watch as he slowly descends into insanity and come to grips with Nicole's death. This one, we are given the most, like, we're pretty much just thrust into the most random-ass situation ever. Basically, Ellie, from the second game, has apparently found the Marker homeworld and has gone missing. And Isaac's sought out by uh, the last of EarthGov's, you know, uh, they call them themselves, themselves the last battalion of EarthGov. So, it, we're really, there's no real uh, lead-up, there's no, it's just kind of, you're, you're, the game starts and you're thrown into this situation. So, that part kind of put me off from the get-go, but I thought, well, you know, let's, let's see if this develops at all. And, you know, honestly, disappointingly enough, I hate to say, it, it just, it really doesn't throughout the course of the game. There are moments where there's, you know, glimmering, where it seems to be, you know, developing into something, and then it just kind of falls on its face. And that was really sad, because the first two games were just stellar, and they really stuck with me. This one, I, I almost can't even remember half the, the details to it, because they were just that forgettable. The characters included, uh, I mean, Isaac just going again from the spotlight in two the way he was, down to to just this generic guy it feels like he he almost has no personality throughout the whole game nothing really stands out in my mind he doesn't grow as a character in our hearts whatsoever carver i mean the dude's basically just an asshole i mean he's a throwaway character if there ever was one now i understand you know why they had to do that to a point as the co-op was implemented they needed somebody who kind of was a blank slate and you know wasn't going to you know interfere with the canon of the other two games but at the same time had some sort of you know vesting and being in the situation so i mean to that end i get it i see what they had to do there and if you're looking at it from that standpoint i suppose they executed it decently also they did try to flush him out with a little bit of backstory it wasn't the best executed thing i've ever seen but it was a solid attempt and at least gave him a little bit more character than he had at the beginning the unfortunate thing uh, about that, and I'm going to touch on this a little bit later, uh, is to see any of that backstory, you pretty much have to be playing co-op with a friend. And, uh, you know, as much as that was well executed, I'm going to touch on that later on in the video, as I mentioned. The rest of the cast, I, I honestly I could only remember one of their names. Uh, they, they were the most forgettable, unimportant, uh, just one-dimensional group of characters I've ever seen in a game before. Uh, and it, it frankly again that's that's just sad. I know you know I'm not gonna bullshit you here the other games the other characters You know most of them wind up dying off and they're equally unimportant But Strauss in two, you know for being a very a side character was really prominent in a lot of ways You know you always remember his insane ramblings and what he did to Ellie toward the end of that game You know there was there was really none of that present in this one and again that's saddening to me a little bit so, the, the storyline, I would say, if you're playing it for that, uh, just go in with the expectation it's not going to blow you off your feet. Graphics. Now, uh, obviously, this series has always been lauded for its visuals, and Dead Space 3 is no exception. They've polished it even further. Uh, that w uh, goes with a few glaring exceptions, uh, one of which, to me, and this is going to feel like a minor detail, and I wish I'd asked Phil to put some examples of this in the video, the mouth flaps, they don't, there's just an empty black mouth, there's nothing rendered in there, there's no teeth, no tongue, no anything like that. And in two, you know, you had this. There are instances where necromorphs are coming out of 
holes that aren't rendered properly. There's nothing, there's, you know, nothing there. It's just like a black abyss. And I know that might seem nitpicky of me, but to go backwards in that respect seems a little silly to me. There's a couple of little instances like that where you just have to wonder why did they lose budgeting? You know, was their funding not as high as the previous titles? I mean, it's considered a blockbuster hit. You would think they'd get big budget for this kind of thing, but possibly they had to cut corners, which is going to uh, come up again in the gameplay section with something else I have to point out. Uh, the physics, again, top notch, zero gravity, feels like you're floating around in space. In this section of the, the, the game, what you're seeing right here, combined with earlier in the game, with uh, one of the greatest spacewalk sequences I've ever seen before, really makes you feel like gravity plays a factor, or a lack thereof. You see things fly apart in you know, realistic manners, in most cases. Um, yeah, they, they, they've taken that and always held that as a high standard, and they did continue that here, I'm happy to say. These sequences were really enjoyable in most cases. Uh, on to the gameplay, which, you know, most of you are probably going to consider the most important thing. I'm the oddball who likes the story best. Gameplay, they've made a few decisions that, you know, changed the series, and a lot of people were speculative about them, and I'm here to kind of go over a lot of those things. Co-op was the biggest one, which I feel like they did in, uh, I almost want to say phenomenally. It was, it was honestly, in my opinion, the only thing that made this game playable was the fact that I was playing it with Phil pretty much the whole way through. The few segments I did on my own I felt were horribly boring and I, I didn't enjoy it. I found the dialogue is significantly reduced, you know, so you're missing chunks of the story. Uh, the couple of things that are awkward about co-op though is um, there are cutscenes and they always almost seem to exclusively focus on Isaac. And, you know, so if you're playing co-op it kind of awkwardly pans away from Carver uh, and he'll just randomly disappear and reappear, especially if you're playing in single player, you know. And again, touching back on what I said a few minutes ago, I understand the logistics of why they had to do this. They wanted to make the whole campaign drop in, drop out, uh, you know, co-op compatible. That's great, and for the most part they did that well, but there's these little instances like I just mentioned where you can see those are the drawbacks. I almost would have preferred for them to make a co-op campaign that was separate and kind of run parallel to maybe not even starring Isaac but like you know with other, some of these other people perhaps you know and then have the single player campaign its own entity and that would have probably felt a little bit more like the other Dead Space games in the, in the tension and suspense that you're you uh, you know a lot of people were worried about lacking now you don't entirely lose that in co-op I do want to throw that out there but they, um, they, they, there's almost times where, you know, you get the suspense and then you get these rooms that are just insanely difficult, randomly. You'll walk in a room and like 15 plus enemies will swarm you for no reason. The difficulty spiking seems to be like a roller coaster. And I, I think that was their answer to co-op. And I don't know if that was necessarily the right approach either. Because Phil and I played through this. This footage is all done on hard mode on our first playthrough. And we're both respectably good players. And there were times where we'd enter a situation or a room where we had to redo it, you know, four or five times because it was just impossibly difficult when we came from empty corridors and, and you know, puzzle solving. It just, it, it didn't seem to pace very well. Um, one other big positive about the co-op you share your drops. You're, it's not like one person picks up ammo and you, the other person screwed. That they, they were very good and conscientious in that. But on the topic of ammo, all the ammo goes to every single gun. I do not understand this concept in the slightest. It's a survival horror game. Why would a clip of ammo be compatible on a flamethrower and a machine gun? It's not even, it, it doesn't even make practical sense. They at least make it scaled so, you know, 10 bullets of a machine gun equals one rocket, you know, on a rocket launcher, so you don't, you can't get overloaded. But the game does tend to throw a huge surplus of health and ammunition at you. The difficulty's not there. I did say we struggled in a couple of rooms, but for the most part on hard difficulty, we had very little challenge, in particular on the boss fights. You know, you would think these big epic sequences were going to be hard. And we, uh, we pretty much breezed through them. There were only two actual bosses in the game, aside from the final boss and a rehashed hive mind, the final boss of the first game, which you see at the very beginning of this video. 
they included a weapon development tool. Now this I think they did very well. You find weapon parts, you find resources like tungsten and scrap metal and that kind of thing. And you can craft and create your own weapons. Excellent inclusion into the series. I think that part was very well done. You can come up with some very interesting combinations of things. And you, you can share your blueprints that you make with your co-op partners so they can then craft those same weapons if they want to be using as well. Very good mechanic. That was well done. If they'd kept the traditional ammo with that kind of weapon structure, it might have been difficult, but I would have thought it would have been more accurate and might have dissuaded you from making some of those overpowered weapons you have access to early in. Lastly, there are uh, a few glitches, and also they rehash the same environments over and over again. This game is very repetitive. If the first few minutes of this video didn't show that to you, Phil probably didn't even do that intentionally, but there were repelling sequences. You literally go through the exact same you know, military facility. Early part in one game and later on, again, you're walking through the same place when you're supposed to be inside the planet. You know, it's like the same exact room with the same bloody refrigerator. It doesn't make sense. They didn't put in the effort to really give us new environments. And that was very disappointing with the whole freedom they had with the planet Tau Volantis. It looked great on the outside, but on the inside, it's all a bunch of recycled rooms. That was very disappointing and frustrating to me. In conclusion, uh, despite what the screen says there, I gave my score to Phil a little bit early. I'm changing my score to a five. It was, you know, a beautiful game with a lot of fun elements in co-op, but there were too many disappointing factors, especially in comparison to the other games in the series. It was a good game, just poorly executed. If you're a fan of the series, give it a try, but just go in with the expectation. This isn't gonna be Dead Space 2. This isn't gonna be this memorable title. You'll breeze through it, you'll have some laughs, you'll have some scares, and then you'll very likely trade it in again, which is unfortunate. Anyway, uh, that about sums up everything. I hope you enjoyed the video, and by all means, rate, comment, subscribe. Feel free to reach out to one of us if you feel like joining our clan, and click on those videos right there if you are interested in any more. Thanks.